Dr. Dev. Uh, firstly, an advanced note of apology. I started this channel, but uh, I haven't been able to keep up with the pace of the videos that I expected I'd keep up actually because I've been juggling two jobs at a time and you know, time's a bit tough when you're, when you're doing histopath at two different places. But uh, that doesn't mean that I haven't been really putting up videos online. I, I haven't been, I have actually. There are quite a few other videos, mostly on J2 urinary pathology. And uh, this were conducted by me for a separate channel, for a separate online channel, which quite a few of you will already be knowing about. So it's called Neelam Pathology Lectures, and it's conducted by Dr. Saeed Nadim, an esteemed senior pathologist in our community. And uh, he has basically got a lot of subject experts to talk about almost a whole, uh, a whole lot of diverse topics under the sun as far as pathology is concerned. And there are close to around 1,000 videos by now in their channel. So you, if you haven't joined there already, do uh, do yourself a favor, get yourself subscribed to the group and uh, browse through the whole lot of interesting videos and text lectures that they have. Uh, I have conducted probably around six or seven lectures there till date and uh, quite a few. In fact, most of them will be important from the PG point of view, either as long questions or as your cases that you get to see in the routine practice or the ones that come for the exam, basically, as your spotters. So uh, I leave a list of the various lectures that I conducted. And for the ease of convenience, I'll put down the links of all those lectures at the bottom of this video. You can scroll through them and uh, you can click on the link and see whichever suits your taste. So as you see, there are around five uh, 577 videos. This is an old screenshot, but it would have been updated by now and more videos would have been added. Uh, so the first video which was conducted uh, was around two years back, but I'll start with the latest videos which I have got over there. So the ones that I've got there right now, which uh, uh, I am currently in the process of making actually are, are basically focused around prostate. So it starts off with anatomy, histology, immunohistochemistry, and the grossing strategies. Now, this is a nice way to read up the various topics that we come across in surgical pathology. Always aim to go directly to the histology textbooks and uh, pay a lot of attention to the normal surgical anatomy and the surgical pathology of that organ before jumping into the neoplastic and the non-neoplastic entities. So this particular video covers the entire gamut of the normal histological findings that you expect to see in a complex organ like the prostate. And, uh, uh, and as well as it has got some tips on immunohistochemistry as well, and a basic rudimentary idea about the grossing strategy of prostate and specimens. The next one that's, that's going to come up soon, it's not been aired yet, is basically focusing on the various kinds of non-neoplastic pathologies that you get to see in the prostate. And that's a very important thing to know about because unless you know the, the normal benign pathologies in the prostate, you cannot really go ahead and with full confidence make a diagnosis of a malignancy, right? And it's a pretty com uh, I mean, complicated topic because there are quite a few prostatic pathologies which actually mimic your adenocarcinomas of various types. So, And uh, that's an important thing to know before you start off uh, analyzing prostatic carcinomas, actually, the range of diverse benign pathologies that you can expect to see in that organ. So that's coming up soon. These were a set of old lectures which I had conducted, I think, uh, around some five or six months back. So these two topics, basically, these two lectures are entirely focused on renal cell tumors in the adult age group patients, and it's, and it's focused and concentrated around the WHO fifth edition, that is the current one. Uh, pretty exhaustive videos, but that's, it's a very long video because as is usual in my cases, I usually put up virtual cases and discuss the morphological aspect of the case before going into the theoretical aspect of it. So it'll take some time to, uh, to watch the entire video, uh, take it slow, probably, probably go through 10 or, uh, I mean, 10 or 12 slides a day. Uh, grasp a particular topic and then move on to the next. So it's again divided into two sessions. The reason why it is divided into two sessions 
is that the field of renal cell tumors is a huge evolving field and new entities keep on popping up almost on a yearly basis. And it's very difficult to keep up with the entire range of entities and read through the entire range of entities in one single session. So what we have done is, what I have done is, I have segregated the various adult renal cell uh, I mean, tumors, and I have divided it into uh, two major categories. The first, the first part of the session is basically, it is focused around those renal cell tumors that you usually see routinely in your practice. So the ones which are not put into the boxes are the ones which have been covered in the first lecture. So you have got the usual clear cell, clear cell carcinoma, you have got the chromophobe variant, and you have got oncocytomas and stuff like that. The remaining entities in the adult patients, which are pretty uncommon and still important from the PG point of view, because you know these are the latest hot topics and they tend to ask you about those in the exams. So those, uh, so those have been conducted in the second lecture. Uh, I would suggest that you really pay attention to the second lecture because that has got the latest entities included within it. And uh, I think from the exam goer's point of view, the part two, that is the second part of the discussion is probably going to be more important as far as theory is concerned. Mm -hmm. Now you'll see that I haven't really talked, I mean, I haven't talked much about the entities which are listed towards the right half of the screen. And that's because quite a few of them actually arise in pediatric cases, which is why we have got a separate lecture which covers the pediatric group of renal tumors. So that's the third lecture that I've got over there. So it mostly focuses in the uh, on the renal cell tumors that you see in the pediatric age group. So, and that's a pretty uh, long lecture as well, because again, there are a huge number of entities that we have to talk about in a single session. It might take quite a few sessions for you to cover, but I guess at the end of having browsed through the entire lecture, you will feel more confident to approach your WHO textbook. Uh, I have taken a slightly different uh, road in the approach to the, uh, I mean, to this pediatric renal tumors, instead of making it a boring presentation of, you know, the usual set of tumors that we talk about, Weems tumor, clear cell sarcoma, et cetera, et cetera. What I've done is I've looked at the kids from a point of view of the age group. And we come to, uh, we come to an interesting conclusion that, you know, the usual entities that we see, that is the pediatric renal tumors in the very young age group are the ones that we mostly talk about, right? Like the Weems tumor, cystic nephroma, pediatric type, clear cell sarcoma, et cetera. But if you see, those are mostly segregated in a very young age group. But then there are these kids who are neither adults and who really do not fit into the very, very young age group. And there's a huge range of tumors which are coming up in those, you know, those who have crossed the five year and are stepping into the adolescent age group. So those are uh, children tend to get uh, tend to get afflicted by this kind of uncommon tumors that is the newly characterized molecularly uh, molecularly categorized tumors that you see on the right hand side of the screen so you have got this mark b1 division renal medullary carcinoma which was priorly called medullary carcinoma you have got the fumarate hydratase deficient RCCs. You have got the ALK and the TFE3 rearranged RCCs, papillary RCCs, etc. Quite a few of them occur in the in the uh, slightly older age group as well. So you see, this particular family of tumors is an evolving one, and which we don't really often talk about in the pediatric setting. But you need to know about them as well. So those are so this particular lecture actually addresses pediatric renal age tumors on a age. Uh, on an age-based approach, the very young category and the slightly older category. Again, like I said, you need to know about the basics, about the rudimentary basics of the gross as well as the microscopic anatomy of an organ before jumping into the benign and the neoplastic pathologies. So again, there's a small lecture over there that concentrates on the embryology, gross anatomy, and the histology along with the immunohistochemistry of the kidney. So you can browse through that. And uh, there are, and by the way, there are lots of PDFs of these lectures in that particular group. So every lecture has got a PDF accompaniment to it. So I would suggest you download the PDF and then, you know, sync it to your reading of your WHO textbook, you know, keep the copy of uh, the standard histology, uh, the standard histology lecture by your side so that you can make sense of the 
change to the architecture that is happening as the tumor infiltrates into the tissue. Now, this is a uh, another interesting and I would say rather obscure topic because again, we don't get such uh, such cases often in our department unless you've got an active department that, you know, unless you've got an active urology department that basically does a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of nephrectomies for things like uh, this, I mean, ADPKDs or your nephronothesis, et cetera, et cetera. But this is again important from the exam point of view, that is from your long question point of view. So cystic and the dysplastic lesions of the kidney is a very, very important long question. Again, I have tried to summarize the diverse range of pathologies, which could make your kidney look like a bag of you know, like a bag of fluid, like a sack of fluid that is an uh, that is given entirely cystic appearance to the kidney. And as you know, uh, this again is going to be a very huge topic, which is why it could not be finished in one session. So we have, I have actually split up this particular topic into two different lectures, part one and part two. The part one basically focuses on the non-neoplastic cystic renal diseases like ADPKD, ARPKD, and this newly evolving family of the tubular interstitial syndromes, et cetera. So all that is covered in the first part of the lecture. But then again, as we know, the cystic appearance of an organ is not always because of non-neoplastic medical conditions. It can very often be associated also with cystic tumors. So there is a part two of that lecture. The second part of that lecture deals with the various kind of renal cystic neoplasms and the neoplastic cysts in the children as well as in the adults. So as you see, there's a diverse range of pathologies which have been covered again on a, as is usual in my lectures, I try to keep it case-based. So most of these cases, especially in the case of the renal cystic neoplasms have been covered from a case-based point of view. So it's going to take some time, but I believe at the end of the lecture, you will probably come away a bit richer as far as the understanding of cystic diseases of the kidney goes. And especially if this is the first time for you to have been exposed to such a condition. So this is the part two of the lecture that is based on the cystic and the dysplastic lesions of the kidney. And uh, I think that's all the range of pathologies that I've covered till date in that particular group. Uh, in future, I do plan on uploading more videos in my, uh, in my YouTube channel. Uh, but that's again based, uh, it depends upon how much time I have at hand. I have some plans on things like adnexal tumors and, you know, the other kind of things that are often not routinely seen in your surgical pathology departments. Uh, that's going to come up soon. And uh, I will keep you guys updated on that front. Till then, have a blast in this new year. Bye.